Hi everyone, it's Mrs. D, and we're going to continue on in this two-minute tutorial with managing sources and actually creating the bibliography for your research paper. So this is where we left off. We've created two sources. We're going to click close. And now how do we get them on here? I'm going to show you a little trick real quick. The first thing you want to do is you want to insert a page break. What that does, if I go into view and show you, is it creates a whole separate page. So no matter what I type over here, this will always be its own page. So let's say that I went down and I went down and I started typing blah blah blah, all this fun stuff. Woohoo! Okay. My page break keeps this page separate. Now on this page, I'm going to click my cursor down here so that I'm on the page that I created the page break for. In my references and in my bibliography, I can now put in the sources that I've created. I get to choose whether or not I'm going to title it bibliography or whether or not I'm going to title the page works cited. I would prefer that you guys choose bibliography because that's the most common. And there is down here, let's go back into view so that you can see the whole thing. There are the sources that I've created. So, and it's got my title in there. Everything has been um, formatted properly. Things are in alphabetical order. So I don't have to worry about any formatting other than making sure that I've capitalized. Now, what I want to do real quick is we're going to go back into references. I'm going to create another new source because sometimes that happens. You've created, you put in your information for your bibliography and lo and behold you found another book that you found some really good information on. So we're going to say that um, Mrs. Soto has created a book and the book is How to Draw because she is the master of our murals in the library. She wrote this book in 2009 and Desert Foothills created it. So um, it was published in Phoenix. Desert Foothills is our publisher and again it's a book so it's print. We click OK and now we have our new source here both in the master list and in our current list. We click close and our new source isn't there so how do we get it to show? You want to click in your blue box and a little tab up here comes up that says update citations and bibliography. You click on that and now Mrs. Soto's book has shown up and it's again in alphabetical order so you don't have to worry about that. So there you go. Now you've created a bibliography and all you have to do is start typing your research paper up here and your bibliography will always stay as the last page and you never have to worry about it again. So you are good to go. Hey everybody. So back around Thanksgiving, I had a couple hours to kill. So I thought, hey, I should build something awesome. Uh, I'd also been watching a ridiculous amount of Doctor Who at the time, so I figured I would build a TARDIS. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen the show, Doctor Who is about this human-looking alien dude who has two hearts and he travels through time in a time machine that looks like a, a 1960s British police box called the TARDIS. It's weird, I know, but just watch the show, it'll make sense. Uh, sort of. So I grabbed some soft wood, I grabbed an X-Acto knife, started chopping away, painted it up, I added some signage, took a step back and thought, I could make this cooler. So I dug up a battery, grabbed a switch, threw in a couple of LEDs, and I added this functioning light up to the top. I figured I was done, put it away, but then a few weeks later I picked it back up and thought, no, I, I could still make this cooler. So if you've ever watched the show, you might know that there's this running gag in which most new characters flip out about the TARDIS being uh, bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. The inside's bigger than the outside? It's bigger on the inside, that's all. Well, I'm just crammed in. It's bigger on the inside. Is it? I've noticed. So I grabbed the X-Acto knife again and I hacked off this front door here. Uh, and I added this kind of tiny, whiny, black and white pattern behind it. Now before you're like, what? That's lame. What's up with the zebra print inside the TARDIS, Greg? The real TARDIS doesn't have that. Check this out. I built this little companion app that goes with it. Uh, you hold up the phone to the TARDIS and bam, it's bigger on the inside. Uh, I modeled up the TARDIS interior here using this app called Blender, which I'd never used before, so that was kind of a challenge. 
Uh, Blender is crazy powerful, but it's also got a ridiculously steep learning curve. Uh, after a couple days of bashing my head into the keyboard, I finished the model. I wrote up the companion app using a combination of Unity and Qualcomm's augmented reality framework. Uh, and ta-da! A TARDIS that through a bit of techno voodoo is bigger on the inside. Can't really hear it, but it also kind of hums, so you can hear the TARDIS kind of working away in there. Thinking about making a paper craft version of it so anybody can play with it if they want to. But yeah, so that is my TARDIS that is bigger on the inside. Thanks for watching. All right.